Prince Philip's knighthood continues to feature in the online discussion. Nightmare has been trending on Twitter as the Prime Minister promises to consult more on future appointments. Tony Abbott's Twitter account was updated today. He was focusing on other matters. Very pleased Victorian Police Commissioner Ken Lay and Rosie Batty will be founding members of the COAG advisory panel on violence against women. But the uproar over his decision to award a knighthood to Prince Philip is still generating chatter. Speaking to reporters in Melbourne, Mr Abba confirmed he did not consult his Chief of Staff, Peter Credlin, on the matter. He maintains the move was made for good reasons. I stand by the decision. Uh, I understand why some people uh, don't like it. Uh, I respect their right to be critical. That's what you get in a democracy such as ours, and I take it on the chin. We've heard this before from Tony Abbott. We, we've heard him before. Uh, you know, do something that he didn't say he wouldn't do and then ask for forgiveness. Uh, and he continues to do that over and over again. And I think what's been pretty clear from what's been in the press over the last few days, even his own colleagues have had enough of that. Well, Mr Abbott's pledge to consult further comes after criticism from conservative commentators. On Twitter, Rupert Murdoch wrote, Abbott again, tough to write, but if he won't replace top aide Peter Credlin, she must do her patriotic duty and resign. He went on, forget fairness, this change is the only way to recover teamwork and achieve so much possible for Australia. Leading involves cruel choices. The media mogul concluded with Credlin a good person, just appealing to her proven patriotism. A North Queensland federal MP has removed a cartoon of the state Labor leader from his Facebook page. George Christensen yesterday posted an illustration depicting opposition leader Anastasia Palaszczuk naked on a wrecking ball. In a post today, he wrote, it's pretty pathetic to fake outrage at a joke just to score political points. He added, I fear as a nation we are losing our sense of humour to political correctness. Social media users in Japan are uniting behind a freelance journalist held captive by Islamic State militants in Syria. A Japanese filmmaker living in New York has started an I Am Kenji Facebook page to reflect on the plight of Kenji Goto. Protests have also been held to rally behind the 47-year-old and demand more be done to free him. His captors are demanding the release of a woman involved in a bombing in Jordan a decade ago. In exchange, Goto and a Jordanian pilot could be set free by militants. Authorities in New York are defending their decision to shut down the city's transport system because of winter storm Juno. Mayor Bill de Blasio wrote on Twitter, grateful that last night's storm was not as severe as was expected. Photographer Nigel Barker posted this online, a beautiful end to the Snowmageddon 2015 that never was in New York City. Drone footage has been posted on YouTube by Jonathan Harper. It shows relatively empty streets as people were told to stay indoors after what was forecast to be a potentially historic blizzard. Civic leaders say they adopted a better safe than sorry approach. To me it was a no-brainer. We had to take precautions to keep people safe. And uh, God forbid this storm had not moved uh, you know, what was ultimately 20, 30 miles to the east in our case, um, we would have then been hit by that incredible magnitude of storm. And had people not been off the roads, there would have been a lot of people in danger and probably some people would have lost their lives. We can't take that risk. Well, now some rare footage of lightning strikes seen from above. The European Space Agency has shared this time-lapse sequence. It's made up of 49 images taken 400 kilometres above the Earth from the International Space Station. It was taken back in 2012 by the agency's night pod camera. Taylor Swift has responded to hackers who attacked her social media accounts and threatened to release nude images. The pop star took to Tumblr to announce her Twitter and Instagram pages were breached. Twitter suspended at least two accounts in response. Swift has at least 51 million followers on the site. And she made light of the situation, linking it to her hit, Shake It Off. In one tweet, the singer wrote, because the hacker's going to hack, 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 hack. And she also addressed the prospect of them distributing nude pictures, writing, have fun photoshopping because you've got nothing. 
Well, a day on, people are still reflecting on Facebook's outage, with Facebook down trending on the platform and on Twitter. Here's one post that had plenty of traction. It's captioned, Manual Facebook Update Protocols Engaged. And this was also widely shared, how to survive Facebook going down. The outage lasted for up to an hour. The Facebook-owned Instagram service was also blocked, along with the dating app Tinder. A hacking group associated with other recent high-profile attacks claimed responsibility but Facebook says the fault was its own. It says it occurred after a change affected its configuration systems. Twitter is rolling out some new features. It's announced a direct messaging function that will allow users to speak privately with a group of up to 20 people. Twitter says they'll be able to start conversations with multiple followers. The smartphone app has also been modified to allow people to capture, edit and share videos of up to 30 seconds. The enhancement comes as Twitter looks to boost engagement with users. It's estimated the micro-blogging site has 284 million monthly active users. Well, here's a selection of terms being searched on Google across Australia at the moment. Now to some other items that have been generating interest online. Now, professional football in the US reaches its climax on Monday, but there is an alternative to the Super Bowl. Enter the Puppy Bowl. It features 85 dogs from animal shelters across America. This is our 11th year doing this. It's an incredible, incredible event, and uh, I couldn't be more excited to be a part of it. Now, this event was filmed in New York back in October. It's designed to promote pet adoption, and it seems there was no shortage of fouls or excessive kisses on the field. And touchdown! Bubba, nice job! That's another one for Team Rock. The Puppy Bowl airs in the U.S. on Sunday. Last year's program attracted more than 13.5 million viewers. Thank you.